So let's go with our, our rankings. Uh, I'll start. We didn't talk I, about we didn't talk about the Texans. We, uh, about- we don't we don't well, need that. Well, that's I'm- why we're, we're going to talk about the Texans okay. because I got the Colts number one. I got the Jags coming number two. I got the Titans three. And unfortunately, I'm not trying to crap on the Texans, but I have them last. And the reason I have them last is because one, I feel like they made a big mistake firing Dave Cully. What? Yes. I'll be honest with you. And I'll tell you why. The guy was not terrible last year. I think the cards that he was dealt, what Houston was dealing with last year, to fire him after his first year, I thought it was a bit unfair. Uh, Him working with Davis Mills, I think Mills took a – I think he was better than everybody expected. Oh, yeah. So if this guy really is as good as he played last season and if he takes another step, I think the Texans have a bright future. But unfortunately, he still has plenty to show us. I don't believe in the Texans roster right now. I don't believe they have a lot of talent out there. And quite frankly, I don't see this team winning more than four games next year. Let me say something about David Coley. I think he's a great guy. It was awesome when they got that week one victory. But that's the thing. He was a big motivator for these guys. They played under him. They loved him. Here's the issue. When they hired him, it it was, in a way, he was not prepared for that job to be an NFL head coach. He, He was, in a way, one of the worst head coaches last year. And for them... We all knew it wasn't a long-term thing. We all knew it was a gateway until they could kind of navigate their way through the Deshaun Watson situation. And moving on from him, for Lovey Smith, the anointed defensive coordinator, was Lovey the best option? I don't think so. I hasn't coached in a while in the NFL. And that's what, but, I, that's what I was going to say right there, John, is that, yeah, I think we can agree that David Culley was not He was long, not good. No, no, he was not the long-term option. Um, but... And he was going to be the gateway to something, but the gateway to Lovey Smith. I mean, all respect to Lovey Smith. Like, you know, glad he glad he's got a, a job. I think he did a decent job in, in Chicago. Um, got him to a Super Bowl, right? Against the Colts. What was that? Was that 05? 2000, 2006? 2006. Yeah. yeah, I think that was Lovey Smith. Yeah, yeah it's Lovey. Yeah, third year team. Yeah, he got he he got to an NFC Championship game, I believe, against Green Bay in um, '09, I think. Um, so, but but really was, and I don't even think Lovey Smith was their option. Like, who are they? Who were they expecting that was going to be on the open market after after a year? Who they just had to be like, okay, David Culley, you're the coach for this year. We're going to get rid of you because we have a plan for the year after that. Who was the guy? I don't even think they knew that there was a guy. I felt like the guy for them should have been Brian Flores, but they decided to go Lovey. To me, they were just trying well, to... Also, Brian Flores got kind of, you know, blackballed. Totally over. should be an NFL head coach. But on a side note, with Lovey Smith, the Texans, sure, they're getting these top picks on their own, but they're trying to win games. They're trying to be competitive. After the way the Deshaun Watson thing ended, it was so ugly. They're trying to build the identity, the, the culture. We talked about that a lot with Tennessee. You're trying to rebuild the atmosphere, just the entire organization from the ground up. And for Nick... Karis, I forgot how to pronounce the GM. They're they're looking to just build that culture. And the guy that's got almost a decade worth, I think he's got even more uh, of head coaching experience. That's the guy they say, say to themselves, we can build this defense. And speaking of Davis Mills, I wouldn't really attribute that development to David Coley. I would attribute more of that to Pep Hamilton, their passing game coordinator and quarterbacks coach. Hit it. Right, yeah, yeah. Because you said, um, God, I'm not going to be able to say his last name either because you can't say uh, Nick Caceres. Caceres, right? Uh, our guy. Um, he was the general manager, right? Yeah. For the New Patriots. Nick Casario. I was. I thought there was a T in there for a moment. Nick Casario. But he was the GM for the New England Patriots, right? I believe so. He was in there. He was, yeah. he was in New England. Okay, so but he wasn't really the the GM for the New England. Yeah, Patriots. he had many like, roles. He the, wasn't there. He was the title, and he was the uh, face for the franchise. He, Bill Belichick was making all those moves. So, I mean, and we've seen people come from big, uh, Bill Belichick's tree and they haven't really had success at all. I mean, so. But that, like, that's for head coaches. I I, I think that's an unfair thing to do. You did that with Alabama quarterbacks last year. And look what Mac Jones did. I don't like how you do that. I'm not a fan. I do agree with the coaches, sure. But I think it's a little bit wrong just to say, oh, you're from New England and you're new here. I don't think that's proper because Nick Casario has done a good job in Houston. Talking about Pep Hamilton, their new offensive coordinator, brilliant for David Mills. Davis Mills. I really can't pronounce anything today. <laughs> it's just, it's just, it's all right. We're all, I'm struggling. 
Pep Hamilton's from Chicago. He actually worked with, with Lovey Smith. He's got time with Alex Smith, Chad Payton, I think, Andrew Luck. 2016, spent a year at the Browns. Then he goes to the, the Chargers, Justin Herbert's rookie year. And now this year, in 2021, we saw last year, the work he did with Davis Mills to start the year wasn't great. He did outplay Mac Jones in that one week where they almost beat New England. Um, but over the year, I mean, Davis Mills and Mac, they were the two good rookie quarterbacks. The rest were not good. And it's funny, like, our expectations were probably me. I think for me, I had pretty high expectations for Zach Wilson. Then his receivers all went down. The two guys you probably expected the least from, eh, Mac was in the best situation. They were by far the best. And I like how Davis Mills going a year two. You draft John Michi. You have Brandon Cooks, one of the most underrated receivers in the NFL. That and Marlon Mack for $2 million, that's a pretty good sign to me. I know it doesn't move the needle a whole lot, but Marlon Mack showing he can be one of the better running backs in the league. If hasn't he's played. Healthy. What's up? If he's healthy. If he's healthy, that, that is valid. Yeah. All right. But, like, okay, I, I, don't, I don't understand how you got me to actually talk about the Houston Texans when I didn't want to talk about the Texans. Because I literally wrote down, I took no notes for the Houston Texans because all I did was say worst team in football. That's all I wrote because I don't want to talk about them. They're mediocrity. They're turning it around. Like, Marlon Mack two years ago is getting a thousand Why rushing yards. turning yard. around, John? Where are they going? Back to the, the number one overall pick? They're headed in the right direction. You know how hard it is for Davis Mills with the, the looming presence of Deshaun Watson hanging over your season and replacing him with a coach we all knew wasn't actually meant to be the head coach and he's kind of just there and there's no stability for him to continue getting better and better. Now you add in Lovey Smith who has all the experience. This is where they're going. Did you say something before that? No, I said they're not. They're going nowhere. That, they're, that's not, what I mean. they're not going nowhere. They have their quarterback. They're building the offensive line. I thought Kenyon Green... At Texas A&M, the hometown kid, I thought that was an awesome right, pick. I'm a big fan of Derek Stinley. I think he's one of the most talented players. Where do you have them ranked right now in the division? Right? I have them above Jacksonville, my friend. What? I have this Houston team. Yeah, I don't think they win less than four games. I'm expecting them to win upwards to six or maybe even seven. And with Jacksonville, I'm expecting them to win three or four, maybe to five. This guy's smoking something. You're smoking something. <laughs> You're <not> smoking. <laughs> no I think way. with the Texans... No. The defense uh, okay. is going to continue getting better and better. I Like I said before, I think Derek Stinley, I think he's going to have a big-time year. may take him some time, along with John Michi. They're both coming off of injuries. But those are two guys, I'm a fan of them just being true starters. Stinley especially, I think there's a good amount of star potential there, especially considering the fact they took him the third overall pick. I think you're totally being disrespectful to what Houston is doing. I think it's all going the right direction. Why is it all... Your mic's cut out for me, my friend. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm mouthing words. I'm mouthing. I'm saying. I was gonna I'm say. I, I think Houston's it's, in a good direction. I think they found the GM. Bill O'Brien is not their head coach, and Levy Smith is he a long-term solution? I don't think so. But I think he's better than David Coley. And I look at his team. I say Davis Mills should be better. You have Nico Collins going to his second year. There's more and more talent being added. I think they can have more receiver depth. I think Marlon Mack's fine. He's he can be good. There's not a whole lot of depth. Offensively, they're continuing to build. Lamry Tunsil played five games last year. He's one of the best tackles in the NFL. He's going to be healthy this year. They're able to restructure his contract and keep him. Houston, they don't have the marketable star. They don't have a D-hop. They don't have a Deshaun Watson. But we're starting to see they're turning around the culture. The faults that kind of plagued them that ended the Deshaun Watson era, all of a sudden, they're starting to be better run. And I think they're going to, to build that culture and continuity. I'm not a big fan of them and all these random veterans and one-year deals. I think that's a little bit excessive to a certain degree. But I mean, in two years, I can easily see this being back to a respectable team that people actually will decide to talk about on the podcast. You know, it will be an interesting team. Do you guys, Davis Mills, I mean, he was good last year. And I think bad and more talents. He had he wasn't just as bad of a situation as Justin Fields or Trevor Lawrence. Like I said, Coley and Deshaun Watson, he had no talents around him outside of Brandon Cooks. His best offensive lineman was hurt. And I mean, he had a way better year than Trevor Lawrence. So why are we being so, dis so dismissive to them? I think he's a good Done. quarterback. Done. Okay. I don't, you want, you don't understand how we can say that the Texans are headed in the right direction when you also just said that you don't believe their coaches, that, that it's a short-term solution of the coach. Oh, if you're headed down the right path, that means you found the coach for the future. They haven't found that. 
Well, at least at the moment, that's what we think. That's and I, all three of us agree on that, that we don't think he's the long-term solution at head coach. I don't think he is. Hold yes, on, hold, but... on. hold on, because I had, to, I had to, you guys act like Davis, Davis, David or Davis, Davis, Davis. Mills. Come on, Davis. come Mills. on. Put your, I had to, I had to take your notes. I don't know. I just looked up his stats real quick. Homeboy was 16 touchdowns to 10 interception and had a QBR of 35. That's way below average. Uh, okay. All right. Are- All right, Mr. Statistics. He was in a horrible situation. Can you name me one receiver on that team outside Brian Cox? Because no, you know it all. Oh, that, I'll go. oh, no, 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 no. So, no, no. You guys are going to be nice to Jacksonville and Trevor Lawrence, and they're going to dismiss this guy. Because he was, like I said. Jacksonville, Jacksonville, Jacksonville had people. Had people? DJ Shark played four games. What do you mean he had people? That's only that's only helping Trevor. They still had James Robinson at the backfield who's a pro bowler. One that's literally one player. Can you name me more? Still very good. Marvin Jones and LaVisca Chenault. That Jacksonville is awful for Trevor. Trevor. Solid players. LaVisca Chenault has proven nothing in the NFL. What are you talking about? I mean, he's a he's a switchblade. He's a switchblade army knife, dude. He just he does he was, everything. Some weeks he was their number one receiver, my friend. Tavon Austin was like one of their main yeah, receivers. Some weeks. They, they were dealing with injuries. Exactly. Why? So Trevor Lawrence was in a bad situation, and so was Davis Mills, the the Texans' best player. He was literally right, requesting can, a trade right, last year. John, we can we can get at this at another point in time because I promise you, Davis Mills will never be mentioned on the same same. Uh, pedestal as trevor lawrence i promise about, you i'm not i'm not saying that i'm just saying you compare him to justin fields and zach wilson all those guys are in terrible terrible situations all i'm saying is you love talking about jacksonville and how they're going to be the second best team in the division this year and all i'm trying to tell you is davis mills will be a legitimate starting quarterback he had shown that last year he continually got better and better and you're throwing a qbr at me his qbr at me completed 67 percent of his passes he had a really good rookie season it was almost on level of mac and Mac, by the way, one of the best offensive lines, one of the best running games. He had more weapons between Kendrick Bourne and all their other options at tight end, even though they weren't running the double sets. He had a better defense. He had Bill Belichick. And still, Davis Mills impressed everybody that had actually watched in Houston. Numbers will say one thing. If you haven't watched him play and you haven't seen the talent around him, you're going to come, if you actually do watch, you're going to come around with a different takeaway. And that is, this guy may be their franchise quarterback, to me, he actually will be if they continue to support him. I thought John Michi out of Alabama was a good pick. They're adding more talent. The defense is getting better. They're going to have Cleveland's picks. Bro, they have the Browns pick in 2023, 2024. They have a third round pick. They have fourth round picks coming. They have their own, which are not going to be later in the draft. They have a lot of picks coming in. The Deshaun Watson trade, they definitely. I mean, what if Watson only plays like four of the six games this year? That Browns pick is likely going to be in the top 15, and they're going to have their own in the top 15. That right there helps you get a one of the best receivers in the class, maybe one of the best offensive tackles. All of a sudden, kind of like Detroit, that is what this reminds me of, the Lions rebuild. I don't think they're going to win a whole lot of games, probably five to seven. But things are starting to turn around. Is Lovey Smith a long-term solution? No, but I think he brings some stability now. And his team is trying to win games. I think we're spending way too much time on Houston. Because you're dismissing a good young quarterback and a team that has upside to grow into a respectable organization oh my, dismissing them when i believe when i believe all three of us had them in their our bottom five teams in the nfl this year. i did not i highly doubt i did i don't i think i had the jets and the, the falcons well you probably had them number six and seven no i had the jets and the falcons at six and seven yeah. Okay. Okay. We, let's let Justin please let's get off the side because i don't want to talk about the I, I just find it absolutely he can be your pet project Every- davis mills can be your pet project and we'll see you're throwing his QBR at me, and you're providing zero context to his actual surroundings. That's totally unfair. Do you agree? That's totally unfair to hold it. Uh, am I wrong? You don't. You have no response to that. You know rebuttal because you know it's true. No. Oh. No. I'm gonna. I'm gonna send John a shirt in the mail this oh that says "Number One Fan of Davis Mills." I'm not yeah. his number one fan. All I do is respect the guy that had an impressive development over his rookie year. Here, you're 100 percent correct. I'm not knocking Davis Mills. I'm a fan of him. I thought he took. I I really do think he was the second best rookie quarterback. It wasn't close. No, 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 no. You really think? Right. I mean, it was between Zach Wilson, who completed like 55 percent of his passes. Yeah. If we're gonna throw the numbers around, Justin Fields, who was disastrous, Trevor Lawrence, who was a nightmare, and Trey Lance, who apparently the, the 49ers don't like, even though I think it's a smoke screen to try to, you know, make teams think they want to keep Jimmy G. Regardless, no, obviously, so, there's only two good rookie quarterbacks. I am a hundred percent with you. 
But like, I just don't think they're a better team than the Jaguars. That's it. I, yeah. I, I have them finishing last. I we think should talk it's about a it. project. I, I love the fact that there was so much passion in a conversation about the Houston Texans. I loved what the team's doing. I'm a fan. And the three of us live on the East Coast. I absolutely love this. <laughs> this is true. fantastic. But let's shift it to the East Coast. 